This is a uh, Faraday's law problem where you have a coil consisting of 200 turns. So you've got some 200 turn coil. Um, each turn is a, uh, oh, I'm sorry, it's a square, <laughs> square of length D, of side length D. And there's a uniform magnetic field directed perpendicular to the plane of the coil. It doesn't say which direction, but it doesn't matter. So we just say B is perpendicular. So like B is outside of the, the plane. And the field is changing from zero to half a Tesla in 0.8 seconds. So I'll say B1 equals zero and B2 equals uh, half a Tesla. T1 equals zero and T2 equals uh, negative, uh, or it's not negative, 0 0.8 seconds. So this is a Faraday's law problem. So the induced EMF by Faraday's law is equal to negative n d phi b over dt. So that's negative the number of, of turns by the uh, multiplied by the, the time rate of change of flux, the derivative of magnetic flux with respect to t. But in this case, uh, we don't know which direction the magnetic field is. We don't really know which direction the current is changing. It, the, the problem doesn't really care. So the problem is just after the, the uh, absolute value or the magnitude of the induced EMF. So that's just n d phi over dt. A lot of times I will just write d phi because I don't want to take the time to put the b there. And you should know by Faraday's law we're talking about magnetic flux. Okay, so let's expand on this. That's N times D. What is magnetic flux? That is equal to B dot A or B A cosine of phi, where phi is the angle between B and A. So I'm going to write it in this form, which is what we'll, we will usually do. So the derivative of B A cosine phi over dt. So we're looking at the time rate of change of this whole quantity, all these things multiplied together. If all these things are changing, they're all playing a role in the, in the, the, in, in the flux and therefore the induced EMF. Uh, if only one of these things is changing, that's fine. You still have an induced EMF. So if B changes, induced EMF. If the area changes, so you squash these coils together or something, okay, that, that will induce an, uh, an EMF. Or if you rotate the, so that their orientation with respect to the magnetic field changes, that will also induce an EMF. In this case, we know that the area is fixed. There's no change there. The orientation is fixed. There's no change there. Um, but we do know the magnetic field changes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write N B, uh, excuse me, not B, N A cosine of phi times dB dt. I pulled these two things out of the differential operator there because they're not changing. They're remaining constant. Only the magnetic field is changing. Also, let, let's get one thing out of the way. What's the angle phi between, uh, between B and A? Well, if B is out of the plane, the area normal vector, remember it's perpendicular to the plane of the loop, so it's out of the field as well. Um, so that's going to be 0 degrees, so cosine of 0 degrees is 1. So N A D B over D T. Now, is it, um, is this, how is the magnetic field changing? Is it changing in a constant manner? Uh, yes, actually it says it's changing linearly. The problem states that the magnetic field is changing linearly from one to two. It's changing in a very constant uh, fashion, as a constant slope, a constant rate of change. Why is that important? because that means we can now write N A is just the change in B over the change in T. Oh, not D T, excuse me. Delta T. So you can say that the derivative of B with respect to T is the same as delta B, delta T, if it changes in a linear manner. Linear change. 
if, for example, the magnetic field ramps up really quickly and then kind of levels off, you know, levels off a little bit, well, then we need the function. We need the function of we need b as a function of t, and we have to differentiate that function. But in this case, it's just we look at b over t. The problem states that it's increasing linearly from b1 to b2. So that way, the, the, de the derivative of this is just the slope of the straight line, which is dv dt. If it were to change like this, well, then we would have to differentiate the function. So this makes things a lot easier. So the induced EMF, I'm, well, OK, I'll put the absolute value of is In A now, A equals d squared. It's a square loop. Delta B is B final minus B initial over T final minus T initial. And I, I should have used final and initial, but I didn't. So I'll write the B2 minus B1 over T2 minus T1. These things are both 0. So in D squared over B2 over T2. And I, I guess we can put in the numbers. 200 times 0 0.18 meters squared times B2, which is 0 0.50 Tesla over 0 0.80 seconds. We can plug in all those numbers. You get to 4.0 volts. Again, we're not talking about plus or minus volts because we don't know what the, we don't know we don't have all these directions in mind we just uh, we know it's four volts one way or the other